I wanted to kind of just Hey, good morning. Good evening, folks. Hello. Hello, hello. Hey. Hey, William, thank you. Thank you for opening this meeting room. I think the Veeam is the one. <laughs> yes, yes. Veeam, can you give the uh, host privilege to Rao? Then uh, you can leave, right? So now we can share the meeting. Yeah, I think we have him uh, is also in KubeCon, so I think he might be in a position where he may come to speak. Uh, okay. Uh, I guess he has already done that. Okay, so so you are the host, uh, Buyung. Fantastic. So uh, we can get going, I guess. Uh, uh, let me give you host. Okay. Let me give you. No, uh, no, that, that that's fine. You know. Uh, it's, uh, Okay. Just continue. I give you host anyway. You. <laughs> okay, just in case you share. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. No. Uh, no. So. Uh... Hello. Hello. Yep, I can you. Raul is in KubeCon, so might okay. be facing some. Like oh my goodness. Issues. Can you hear me, folks? Yes. Yeah, we now can we can hear you. you. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm. Yeah, please. Thank you. Um, so, so what I was going to say is that the, the two action items that, uh, you know, we wanted to speak about one is, uh, you know, making sure that we have the sub, sub projects identified by next week. No, uh, one is of course the election has to conclude. Uh, uh, currently, it's, it's it's would be presumptuous of me to assume anything. Uh, so <laughs> we're going to wait uh, till the elections conclude. But mm -hmm. regardless, I feel it would be good to actually identify the working groups, sub projects, uh, and take it up from there. Uh, I guess uh, the the two working groups, sub projects that you know uh, subgroups that have already been talked about. Uh, in the past meetings as well. One is about getting the dev related security action items handled. Uh, if you look at the charter, that is the number one uh, subgroup mentioned as well. So that would basically take into consideration the openness of uh, uh, you know, uh, related changes that have to be done across uh, the, the projects and repos. The second is, uh, you know, now that's the, the second, third and uh, fourth subgroups I feel there is enough energy in the room to actually also talk about service mesh and secrets management. But again, it depends upon the contributors and the you know, ownership uh, who would want to take up the lead on specific uh, 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 you know, working groups and the sub subgroups. So if there if there is any specific uh, work item that anyone would like to pick up, and now is the time to call out, or maybe till next week, uh, you know, before. Probably right, next so week. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, I, I think, I think after election is over, I think that good, good topic. Uh, but one thing, uh, service mesh uh, and secret. Uh, so I think that we need to uh, lay out the architecture of the nephew, where you're going to apply service mesh and yeah. uh, where you're going to put sidecar and then also where you're going to put secret. We have to know there's some architecture, then we need the team need to discuss about the way, where you're going to put the uh, configuration for sidecar. And then also uh, this Monday, uh, SIG architecture team, they, uh, with the Sandeep, uh, he mentioned about the uh, nephew GUI UI. 
So once nephew has a UI and we need to talk also talk about the uh, user uh, admin user uh, the authentication authorization and possibly single sign on because the Correct. and in own app case we're using the uh, you know Kickrock uh, as a reference implementation for user management and also uh, using OS2 based uh, token. Mm -hmm. And then also uh, possibly support single sign-on. Uh, I'm not sure we need case for single sign-on, but uh, maybe uh, join with Alpha Never. We we'll see. And mm -hmm. that one, and uh, and there was I I told the uh, Sig one I'm gonna raise uh, this issue to uh, bring up this issue to uh, the Sig uh, security because we need to have okay. security. And uh, also, as you mentioned, uh, you talk about secure supply chain um, since nephew. They allow to uh, the put uh, the custom controller, for example, right, and mm -hmm. then operator. And that means uh, uh, how do you to secure those the uh, the you know supply chain, for example, right? With the, mm -hmm. who's gonna how you gonna detect the uh, tampering images? How to detect the, uh, the who sent uh, the images and software? How do you uh, know they are authentic or you know? So anyway. Several things to talk, but uh, I like to understand yeah, each, the, uh, your goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Each of these action items have to be a separate working group by itself, oh, okay. uh, in my opinion. And the second part is now we are talking about user-based RBAC and access control, right? Like, and and uh, that would that would come into play because of the nephew UI that, that, that you mentioned. But apart from that, uh, you know, I feel there is a strong need, and this was being raised in a lot of other uh, a SIG meetings that currently we do not have a secrets management in place. That that's a burning problem that we have in the field is what I've been I've learned. And again, uh, uh, you you might know it better. Uh, so so before going on to the user authentication and user authorization, uh, I feel we may, maybe we'll have to uh, again if, if there is someone who is actually more keen to take up the user authentication authorization and our back related action item. Uh, we can prioritize that, but the secrets management is a problem here and now that most of the other microservices are already facing is what my understanding is. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so workload identity and uh, all those aspects might might have a bigger. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, so, yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. I think I just lay out the items. Uh, Possibly okay. we can work, but you, you have. We have to prioritize, right? We cannot take right. everything right. together. So that I, I, I'm, I agree with you. So I, I follow your, uh, you know, direction. So okay. Yeah. So, so in the next meeting, the the aim would be to actually just lay down the chart as to these are the possibilities, and say, and few of them has to be mandatorily done. So those have to be taken up as P zeros. But between P ones, we can pick up the issues that you know, or pick up the working group charter items uh, that we might want to prioritize, and you know, uh, doing a show of hands or doing something like that, maybe you know, uh, and then go reach back to TSC and see if it might make sense for, uh, you know, from the priority perspective, if it makes sense. Okay. Uh, uh, not next, necessarily next, TSC, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Okay. Uh, just information, guys. And mm -hmm. next next week, I uh, attend the uh, the elephant DTF. I present oh. several uh, topics, so I, I need to skip this. Probably most likely skip this meeting, and uh, um, and also uh, we're gonna talk about own security at that time. Also, uh, new uh, security architecture and then thing. Anyway, so yeah. I'll skip uh, for information. I'll skip next meeting. So anyway, I'll uh, read uh, recording. And also, uh, in look at the work item you guys said. Okay, no problem. Just yeah, uh, yeah. no. We'll, we'll, I, I think I'll send the slides before in time on the six security Slack channel, and okay. and uh, we can do the show of hands maybe there as well. Uh, you know, yeah, uh, what's yeah. a big deal? You know, sure, uh, people yeah. might be in a better position to do this. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Super. Uh, so with that said, right, uh, one thing that you know I wanted to call out for some uh, some uh, you know. Early, so is there anyone who is interested in taking up the next level action item for the open SSF, uh, you know, uh, uh, action items like to get all the projects and repos within? Uh, so there are two action items here list down all the tasks that would be required to actually handle the open SSF related scorecard and batch, 
and the second action item is to look at uh, you know buyung you, you in the last call you shared one link about oh, how onap is doing it and check how do we get that uh, you know handled uh, you know do the first level analysis and then maybe call in experts from mm, onap uh, security so that's that that's i'm hoping that you know by next week we have some sort of handle on these these aspects so that a week later from that we can try to bring in uh, you know uh, buyung and we'll require your help there to bring in you know you mentioned tom right tom was the one um, who's yeah, tony uh, Tony, Tony. Tony, sorry, yeah. Tony is here. Yeah. Tony Hans Hansen is here. So yeah. Okay. Oh, Tony Hansen is here. All right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah. Tony. So yeah, maybe that 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 could be an agenda item, a concrete agenda item for a week after next. Yeah. You know, I I introduced Tony uh, under his uh, permission. Uh, we, I shared the link. Uh, Tony as uh, tool. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And that the his tool could be uh you know. Use as elephant level uh, the batching tool. I know that we are using you are using the openness stuff, but uh, his tool is pretty good. And Kenny Paul said, you know, pretty good. So anyway, so if you need uh, any additional uh, demo or some insight, uh, Tony's the you know best guy for uh, the batching, uh, openness SF and others. Tony, <laughs> did I introduce yourself? <laughs> Hi, Tony. Oops. Uh, looks like looks like he dropped off. Maybe he's having some issues with his network connectivity. Okay. Uh, yeah. I wonder whether he's in KubeCon as well. Anyone yeah, who's he, having he, a network connectivity issue might be in KubeCon. Yeah, he he uh he said uh, he will join this to this meeting. So I think it okay. will be good because the maybe I introduced him uh, wrong. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't think that. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyways, uh, I I don't know whether he's there on the Slack. Uh, channel so that we can uh, you know solicit uh, uh, some some questions responses or in an astral as well. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. So two two action items. One is uh, the next the, the next meeting. Uh, so when when does the elections conclude? Uh, does anyone know? Raj, do you know? Hey, Tony is back. Hey Tony. Hi. <laughs> yeah, I think Hello. it's uh, next week, uh, uh, Rahul. Okay. I lost the connection. Right as you okay. were introducing me. <laughs> yeah. I hope I don't upset you uh, by introducing wrongly. <laughs> just so, Tony, I think the just quick, uh, you know, uh, you. I'm not sure you can access the uh, this uh, Slack uh, nephew Slack. Then we chat a lot here. Uh, seek security if you can. Uh, the join there, it could be nice. That's what Rahul just mentioned. Tony? I'm here. Uh, was there something posted in the chat or something? The, uh, the chat is no. lost. So, so yeah. two things, uh, Tony. You know, uh, it would have it would be great to have you on the Slack channel of Six Security for Nephew as oh, well. Oh, Slack channel. Uh, yeah, Slack yeah, channel. Yeah, sorry. That's, yeah. 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 Uh, so, so we could ask some, you know, solicit some responses asynchronously. That was the aim there. The second part was, you know, if you could just quickly introduce uh, us to the work that you've done in the context of OpenSSF and, you know, uh, the, the primary requirement there for hearing it from yourself, directly from yourself would be, would be great. Uh, would it be possible? Sure. Please make sure Okay, so um, I'm what you would call a <laughs> a, a long time uh, developer. I've been working with ONAP for since before ONAP was ONAP, um, and my my work there has been divided in two parts mainly. One is a uh, contributor and committer in the DCA subproject and also on the security committee. So I've been involved in the security committee there almost from the beginning. And so I've also been involved in the past with standards organizations and whatnot, but 
a, a lifelong development and security focus. So, hope that's sufficient. If not, so thank you, uh, Tony. It's a privilege to have you on the on the uh, If you have any question for Tony uh, about the tool, and Tony can, uh, Tony's the best person can provide that info. Yes. Uh, so, uh, Tony, one one simple and you know, uh, pardon me for my ignorance here. Uh, a basic question here. Now, in terms of open SSF, right? Like uh, uh, the kind of uh, the tool that is developed, it sort of you know, nicely uh, co collates all the information across all the project repos for a particular organization. Is how I see it, and then showcases information in the context of LF guidelines. Is that understanding correct, or uh, is is, is the so? Um... Open Security Foundation badging program. Uh, I don't know if you remember the the Heartbleed attack, yeah. which came out against Open SSH uh, five six years ago. Uh, there was because of, or as a reaction to that, uh, mm -hmm. a group of Security people, not just security people, but predominantly security people, got together and um, put together the Angoro? what the, they called the core infrastructure. Hello? Hello? We can hear you. We can hear you. We can hear you. Uh, so, hello? Hear somebody say hello. hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Can you ask Rahul to come here? We need to set up the laptop, this laptop. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay. So, <laughs> the the core infrastructure initiative is what started the the best practices badging program, and they're they're looking at open source projects in general, and um, wanted to um, come up with a series of things that. Uh, these these are these are practices that the best projects out there follow, and uh, they they sliced it up in various different ways. Um, you now talking about you know, your your source code and how it's stored and managed, and talking about the documentation and how it's stored and managed, how you're doing your quality control, how you're doing your um, testing. And then they took all the series of criteria and split it up in, okay, for a, for a single developer project, <laughs> uh, what, what's the base level that um, we think you need in order to get a project, uh, the, the base level badge? And that's where the, the, the passing level badge came in. Originally, they called it the green level. They had green, silver, and bronze, or green, silver, and gold, but then they changed it to passing. And So they, they said, here's a whole bunch of things that we think that every project should be able to get compliance with fairly quickly. And even the, even the one, one person, two person projects that are open source. And so these are the things that you must do and then these are the things that we highly recommend that you do as well. <laughs> and then uh, those became suggested items <laughs> at the passing level. And then all of those things that they said uh, uh, or suggested the passing level essentially became, you must do this, plus a whole bunch of other 
things and a whole bunch of other additional suggested things. And that became the silver level. And then the gold level uh, essentially took all those suggested things at the silver level and turned those into musts and added a few other suggested criteria. <laughs> and uh, that, that became their gold level. And they, they left it open so that uh, it's potential that they could have a platinum level at some point or something like that, but they, they haven't done that. And the questions have been fairly stable. Um, about two years, a uh, year and a half ago, uh, we added a question at the passing level, uh, is your project maintained? So you know, if, if you have a project that's uh, not maintained, then you definitely can't be passing. So that became a, a, a required criteria uh, for the passing level. And so that, that's kind of a, a little bit of history of the open SSF badging. Um, does that help? Uh, so one basic question, Tony, in the context. Yeah. So the, 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 the silver, gold, and so these are recommendations primarily from the LF, uh, LF community, right? Not yes. So, so the core, initiative, core infrastructure initiative came out of the Linux, Linux Foundation. And at, at some point, CEO. Uh, they, they, they were CEO. The open security framework um, initiative from the LF Foundation. So two years ago, two and a half years ago, um, the, the core infrastructure initiative got folded into uh, the open SSF. Uh, area and they've been doing a rebranding um, ever since uh, and now their their website instead of being best practices at core infrastructure.org is now best practices.dev and so forth uh, but it's always been oriented towards uh, open source software and it's uh, it's always been under the auspices of the Linux Foundation. That help? Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I actually have some more questions, but I feel I love, those are going to be project specific questions in the sense uh, you know, there exists a predefined workflow for the GitHub Actions for OpenSSF. Yeah. Are there any challenges? I think the primary thing is the permissions that have to be allocated to the workflow. Uh, was there any specific guidelines uh, from the from the CONAP uh, uh, team about how to handle this? There will be multiple sub uh, sub repos, and each of that sub repo might need some sort of permissions for these OpenSSF uh, workflows. Uh, was there any specific uh, challenge or guidelines that you guys faced? When, when handling it in the, in the projects, uh, that's one of the things. Well, okay. So when when ONAP was created, oh. um, under the Linux Foundation, um, there was a, actually there were two separate projects. Uh, that were created both under the Linux Foundation that were kind of <laughs> oriented to the same thing. And then they got, they were merged into what became ONAP. Um, but there, there were a number of practices that the, the Linux Foundation you know, said to the ONAP community saying, you really need to do this. You really need to do this. You really need to do this. And uh, we recommend that. Um, no, you know, we're we're going to set up uh, uh, Jenkins servers for you to uh, do your builds on, and we're going to have the 
uh, the wiki there and um, uh, your, your documents are going to be published in readthedocs.io. Um, we're going to use Garrett on top of Git for doing the all of the source code control or and review and management yeah. and, and and that basic framework that they gave us um you know, just immediately led to okay we need to document uh our uh, our, our architecture, we need to document our security expectations of each of our projects. Uh, we need to have the, uh, the, the review process. And um, the, one, of, one of the aspects of the review process was that uh, the, the person who was uh, uploading, submitting the code was not allowed to commit the code. It had to be a second uh, second reviewer. So that automatically led to uh, supporting uh, some of the questions on uh, a lot of the questions that the badging had, such as, you know, are, are multiple people familiar with your code? Or do you have your architecture documented? Do you have your security expectations documented? Do you have uh, the um, no. As, are, is your website that where's your documentation that hardened in certain ways? Is your the the website where where, where your Code, your code repository at hard in certain ways is the um, and um, just because we were following that framework that Linux Foundation said no you, you really should be doing this uh, we wound up immediately being able to check off a whole ton of questions on the badging side to uh, oh we need to have uh, uh, the architecture document check met that one. We need to have the design document check got that one. We need to have a source code repository. We need to have uh, multiple people you know, familiar with the code. We need to have this check 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 check. And uh, if if you look at the you know, the badging questions. You'll, you know, you'll find that only some of them really apply to the application itself. And yeah. like a bunch of crypt, cryptographic questions. Uh, you know, are, when, when, if you store passwords that for accessing or people that come in, are you doing it in a way that meets this set of criteria? Uh, that's one of the questions at the passing level, increase, I think. And so, um, is is your uh, did you set up your password store in a way that's separable from your other configuration files? Uh, well, no, we didn't. Oh, we better do that. And it also gave a guideline for a lot of the projects to say, well, we hadn't thought of this. We really should do it that way instead of the way we had been, which isn't as secure. And um, now, we've, now we can check another one of those things off. So uh, ONAP as a project actually has like 30 sub projects and each one of our sub projects has uh, their own badging criteria 
or their own badging. Uh, uh, answers that they do because uh, that uh, ONAP's a big gigantic project <laughs> um, and you, uh, it's hard to say uh, across the board that you know, everything's using uh, shock 256 or higher or something like that but each of the individual projects can answer answer that question. Their PTLs can answer that question. And um, so, but as, so as a project whole, you can then check down, okay, this sub project meets that criteria. This sub project meets that criteria. This one meets the criteria. Oh, that one there needs some work in this area. And we then use that as a, uh, for, uh, wrote a bunch of tickets to uh, in our we were using Jira. Now that's one of the questions. Are you using a, a, a ticket system of some sort? Linux Foundation said to use Jira, so we were using Jira. <laughs> um, if, Tony, if every... uh, sorry. One one quick so, question before I forget. To, uh, so ONEP has distinct projects, many projects, right? So you just mentioned about each project, they have a sub project and then you can uh, is qualify for the uh, batching process. So yes. nephew, uh, in nephew, I asking Rao and team, and I don't know how many uh, project you think uh, is considering, for example, there are many controller. Do you think that's an individual project or is, you know, we have, we are in the big nephew umbrella. Looks like we have to, since ONEP can go into on the project level, sub project level, Maybe nephew, we have to think about which which actual component and then code group we going through this uh, batching process. There's some a little is only has a distinct uh, project. Uh, each has a PTL, but <laughs> in nephew uh, we have a, a SIG automation uh, the group uh, working group, and they has uh, I don't I don't think they have uh, you know clearly separate project individually. So that means the process, I assume, is slightly different. That's I, you know, try to. So, yeah. Are they? So in, in ONAP, we have a whole bunch of separate repositories in uh, Garrett, mm. and there's there's a master list of projects, but each of those like one or more repositories would have its own project team leader. Right. So that became a natural dividing point in ONAP for the badging as well. And so the, the PTL was very familiar with all the aspects of that portion of ONAP. Uh, for example, uh, DCAE is all about instrumentation and uh, getting logging and whatnot. There is a separate project for uh, policy management with a totally separate uh, PTL who knew all the aspects of how the, the policy management was done. So it, it made sense for ONAP to, uh, to split the badging up along those lines. Yeah. Uh, other this... projects, mm -hmm. uh, no, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. I'm not sure how you guys are organized. That, that's the uh, only uh, organization. So I think the nephew could be different. So we need to understand nephew repository system code. And then uh, that's the, in only we, you see uh, the natural dividing point, but we have to find uh, what's the natural dividing point for nephew if you want to uh, pursue the uh, badging for nephew. That's my point. So we need yeah. to work on that. The, the we means the, uh, this team. 
Yeah, I, it really depends on uh, your level of control and the span of the... Um, uh, if you have... I, you're going to need uh, people who are completely familiar with the project or at least certain aspects of it to be the editors of your badging. Um, and um, one of the things that we discovered uh, after a while was we, I, I, well, one of the questions that's uh, in the uh, badging criteria is the uh, bus factor. <laughs> um, do you have at least two people in, who are familiar with each aspect of your project? And that includes being an editor on the, the badging. So do you have two two or more editors on your for the badging. <laughs> uh, so we had PTLs change and editors change, and we wound up um, we wound up designating one person in LFN. Uh, it was originally one person, and then um, uh, David McBride is current the current person there. As you know, David is an editor on every single ONAF project. Okay. Um, but so if, if somebody, you know, the reason it's called bus factor is you know, what happens if they get in an accident with the bus and they wind up in a hospital for two months and, or worse, uh, is there somebody who can take over on? Whatever aspect, so it's a uh, that that's needed for the badging editorship as well. Uh, I think, to my knowledge so far, it's only Lucy, but we're gonna change that uh, anyway. Lau, you have a question, right? Uh, no, I just uh, wanted to say that you know uh, the the points that Tony mentioned that we need to have certain controls at per project level. I think that would still be possible in the context of NFU as well, because we still have, uh, you know, sort of leads. Uh, we have reviewers who, who are the only uh, the folks who can actually merge the request within, within a particular project. So there, there is a decision making process already that is mm -hmm. present. Yeah. I believe we will have to lean on the same team to make some of these decisions as well. And as a security team, our job would be to actually highlight some of those issues during their meetings. Uh, so more or less, what I heard from Tony was that you know, you'll have to make some decisions, individual decisions at a per project basis, per project repo basis. Uh, and we have branch protection rules, you know, branch reviewer rules in the context of repo. I think the same folks would be in the, it would in turn be responsible for uh, handling some of the security related action items as well. And it could simply mean merging the pull request. And as a security team, we might want to tell them that, you know, this pull request need, uh, would require, so this would, uh, I mean, it's a regular review uh, and merge cycle that will happen, right? Even in the context of security. So the way in which I see it, the SIG meetings will help us expedite or prioritize some of this issue in the context of that particular working group or with that particular SIG. Uh, but apart from that, most of the discussion will still happen directly on the pull request that will be that might be raised either by the security team of you know six security itself or so any individual quantity, right? It could be individual quantity. Raise it. So okay. so uh, yeah, that that should be fine. Is is what I'm I feel you know, and the 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 fact that we need need multiple folks to have uh, ownership of a particular repo. If it is not in place, it has to be in place anyways. And that we we will have to raise it uh, as part of the DC meeting if, if there doesn't exist some kind of structure. Based on what I've seen, I've seen that there are at least two people for most of the uh, reports uh, who are sort of doing the merge, uh, merging of protocols. Yeah. 
I, if it's possible for Lucy to say with confidence that um, no, all of the incoming APIs follow this aspect, all the inbound APIs, then or all of the all of the APIs have this cryptographic uh, aspect met or uh, something like that, then it's probably okay to have a single uh, badging mm. number. But okay. if if she's if she's got to go off and say, okay, I have to go talk with this team and to get an answer for them. I need to go talk with this team over here to get an answer for them. Um, and that team over there to get an answer for them, then it might not be wise to have everything in a single batch. I don't know. That's up to you guys to decide. Yeah, we need um, to. In ODAP, we found that easy, it best to split it apart. But different projects are different. So um, now, if you do wind up with a a, a single badge, that's cool. Just recognize that for a lot of uh, a lot of the questions, you need to you know there's a comment section, and if uh, if part of your project is, has uh, meets the criteria, but another project doesn't, no. That's where uh, you can document that in the description, say, uh, on such and such a date, uh, this part met it and this part did not. So uh, our overall score is an unmet, but you know, that's something that you can then look at in the future and say, okay, we need to concentrate on this aspect on for that part of the project and get them brought up to the level so we can have a net across the entire uh, project. Mm. Tony, one clarification. So if the older and nephew component uh, interfaces API, we are planning to put service mesh, then 100% uh, the encrypted communication basis, then you are OK to have one nephew Batching, or we have another criteria we need, we need to separate, depends on the, how a team's going to manage in the code. Is that right? Um, so in, in ONAP, we evolved to using uh, service mesh. Right. And before that, each of our projects had to you know, answer for itself how it was dealing with inbound encryption and sure. uh, inbound authentication and inbound authorization. And uh, but once we had op uh, service mesh deployed for everybody, then we uh, we have a page on the wiki uh, the ONAP wiki that says, okay, these are these are because of our the way we architect the project. All of you can answer met for this question with this explanation, right? This description, right? right. This project just say uh, we are doing service mesh. We don't have to deal with it, so we can pass that way. I, I heard I saw the one of the answer. So that means if nephew. Uh, we have that kind of uh, the framework and then service mesh framework and everything's 100% all the cryptography were handled by that uh, configuration, not by individual uh, the, the project. Yeah. Okay. So uh, in general, there's, I, we had a, a I said we had a, a wiki page that, so okay, at the passing level, you're going to be asked these this quest these set of questions that here's an answer that you can put down and check met because 
as an overall project, we are all, we are doing this. So you don't have to think about it at your individual level, and you can concentrate more on uh, how's your how's your piece of it working. Um, other things like uh, the the architecture of the policy is totally different. Uh, from the architecture of DCA and the architecture of ANAI and the architecture of uh, what have you. Okay. And so those ne those needed to be documented separately, and those questions had to be answered separately. But if you if Nephio has a an architecture that covers the entire project, then cool. Uh, you might be able to get away with single badge. Um, I don't know enough of, about Nephew to. You know, oh, we'll, give... we'll figure out now and the team figure out the best technology and then others. I think that looks like Nephew has a one <laughs> uh, unifies you know the architecture and allow the controllers and then distribution. That's my understanding. But uh, mm -hmm. I was the uh, you know good. The aggregation point, we have to, uh, this team has to work on it, in my opinion. So let's we'll see. Okay. Great. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. It's great. <laughs> great insight. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Tony. I, 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 I guess we'll bother you more on asynchronously on the Slack and if possible you know, uh, as and when the questions come. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, Byung knows how to get a hold of me. If you have any questions, uh, feel yeah. free to send me an email. Um, I'm, I'm happy to answer questions about the badging stuff or how how we wound up dealing with it in ONAP, and um, or if you have questions about the the dashboard that I put together uh, that. Yeah, the, the dashboard, something put together four or five years ago, and uh, it, it, it really helped us, particularly after I added in the various different sorting, really helped us focus in on, okay, for this release, we want all of our projects to get a passing grade on this aspect. Uh, or this aspect, and uh, from SecCom, uh, uh, it was SecCom that was pushing this, and so it was always a security focus that, you know, uh, uh, but the, the same thing can be applied to any of the areas. Uh, uh, as, as time goes on, you can say, okay, we want to focus on this aspect now. <laughs> And make sure that we pass it, and that's how you wind. That's how you get your passing grade and your silver grade and your gold grade, whatnot. And uh, we just had our first project in ONAP achieve gold yesterday. Yeah, yeah, right, sure. SACCOM is security uh, subcommittee in ONAP, and it's same function uh, of this. This group doing it. <laughs> yes. So SECOM and ONAP, we have security focus, so we continually push the security aspects, but now we also um, you know, we, we made recommendations saying, oh, you guys need to work on this. You guys need to work on this. So and having the, the badging criteria helped us focus in on certain things that you know where we should work next. So, anyway, I'm done. Hope that <laughs> Thank helps. you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Quite welcome. All righty. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Any other topic you got in, in, uh, you want to talk Rao and uh, Raj and and born. I guess nothing from my side. Anything else, uh, folks? Uh... No. Yeah.
Okay, sounds good. Thank you, everyone. Have okay, thank day. you very much. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>